The United States, on the eve of a full-scale invasion, was sure that Ukraine would lose. The West assumed that Volodymyr Zelensky would be killed by the Russians, so they asked the Ukrainian president to record a video statement. The previous Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dmitry Kuleba, who held this post until September 2024, spoke about this in Olga Koshalenko's project USA-UA Secret White House Files. Kuleba said that at a conference in Munich, Vice President Kamala Harris advised Zelensky to prepare the creation of a government in exile, as well as to look for some military solutions to prepare Ukraine for guerrilla warfare. The diplomat recalled that in the last days of February before the invasion, he was advised not to return to Kyiv. One person, a great friend of Ukraine, sent me a message, and when I said that I was returning, he said, Zelensky needs to record a video testament, the former minister recalled. In fact, on the first day of the full-scale war, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky made a short address to Ukrainians at around 7 in the morning. This address lasted 67 seconds, in which the country's leader confirmed the start of a full-scale war with Russia. He called on Ukrainians to be resilient and emphasized that the country was ready to fight. The president also called for no panic and to trust the armed forces of Ukraine, reported on a conversation with US President Joe Biden about forming a broad anti-Putin coalition and promised to stay in touch all the time and inform society about the course of the events. Immediately after the invasion began, queues began to form at military registration and enlistment offices and territorial defense units across the country. At the same time, Ukrainians self-organized, defending their hometowns and villages. In his subsequent speeches, the president emphasized that Ukrainians did not surrender and did not raise a white flag. This was a symbol of the country's unity and determination in confronting the aggressor. The president also expressed confidence in Ukraine's victory and called on citizens to fight for every next day. This became the key idea of resistance and invincibility for the entire country. Since then, Zelensky has made a traditional address to Ukrainians every evening. Iran's supreme leader has ordered his military officials to prepare a reprisal attack against Israel, a report said Thursday, as senior Iranian officials warned of harsh and unimaginable responses to Israel strikes on Iranian military sites earlier this month. The report in the New York Times, citing Iranian officials, said Tehran's response would not come until after U.S. voters go to the polls on November 5, though other news outlets have quoted sources saying Iran's response could come ahead of the vote. Earlier Khamenei's senior aide Mohammad Mohammadi Galpayegani warned of a harsh and regretful response to Israel's strike. The recent action of the Zionist regime in attacking parts of our country was a desperate move and the Islamic Republic of Iran will give it a harsh and regretful response, the influential cleric, told the Tasneem news agency. Galpay Egani went on to laud Iran's air defense performance in preventing the entry of the Zionist regime fighters into the territory, and said damage from the strikes was minimal. Shortly after the Israeli attack, Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps Hossein Salami said Israel made a mistake and will see Iran's reaction that will surpass imagination. He claimed that the Jewish nation was wrong to believe that it could change the balance of power in the region by launching a few missiles. Recall, Israel targeted military sites in several regions of Iran on October 26 in retaliation for Iranian attacks, including a barrage of almost 200 ballistic missiles fired towards Israel on October 1. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel had crippled Iranian air defense and missile production systems. He said the strikes had severely damaged Iran's defense capability and its ability to produce missiles. Official Iranian sources have publicly played down the impact of the attack, saying most missiles were intercepted and those that weren't caused only limited damage to air defense systems.
The United Nations Security Council met Wednesday after the United States said Wednesday that North Korean troops wearing Russian uniforms and carrying Russian equipment are moving toward Ukraine. Should DPRK soldiers be used in the battlefield, his would mark a further and serious escalation of the conflict, Robert A. Wood, the deputy U.S. ambassador to the UN said. Ukrainian Ambassador Sergei Kislitsia said it was obvious Russians' actions in working militarily with North Korea are a violation of UN sanctions. Even mice and cockroaches know receiving assistance from the fully sanctioned North Korea is a brazen violation of the UN Charter, he said. North Korea's move to tighten its relationship with Russia has triggered alarms across the globe, as leaders worry about how it may expand the war in Ukraine and what Russian military aid will be delivered to Pyongyang in exchange. Russia's ambassador, Vasily Nebenzia called the allegations, bare-faced lies, and said the allegation is being used to distract from, truly significant problems that threaten international peace and security. Muy buenas tardes.